folks, I hope you did all well. Today is Friday. Just thought to give you a look at the pond without the tarp over it. So, like in the previous video, block work is complete now. We've insulated it inside. Just a few little bits and bobs to tidy up on now. Uh, as you can see, the groundwork has started for the patio to be extended. It's the lads come today to start all this. So all the groundwork should be done by tomorrow. And then we'll be on with laying the base and on with the flagging then. It's all come together nicely. Pond is due to be fiberglass on Wednesday by Ken Alexander. He's coming over from Barnsley to do it for us. So it's just a case of getting all this prepped up now ready for Ken. Managed to keep it pretty dry. This tarp's been over. We've had no rain in the past couple of nights, which has been good, so managed to give it keep it pretty dry in there. Um I've just been in and give it a brushing out. There's little bits of bits of water what's leached in from the floor. But today's plan, I've just got home from work now, I'm going to fill up the corners on all four corners so we get a good flow around the pond and tape up all the joints with some foil tape and going to drill the returns into the pond as well. So I planned it so the returns are really short from the nexus obviously the nexus is going to be sighted over there and I'm going to do the returns on this wall I'm going to do one low level and one a bit higher I was contemplating doing like on the last one one round here and one over there but in all honesty we're going to get a good flow around with the two coming out on this wall so we're going to do one low level here and probably about one but just over halfway up and that should as I said that should give us good flow around the pond push it all out nicely it's going to push it all obviously the flow will push everything around to the bottom drain over to the skimmer which is over here so that's what we're on with today I've brought home a coral a bit what I need from work so hopefully it's not going to be too hard to get I mean we use proper proper core drill excuse me proper core drills in work big industrial ones so they lift you through these bricks no problem but yeah we're going to get on with that and let you see when it's done so just a little look at the fish and the growing and in the vat. Growing now we've, we've turned, well we haven't turned the heat off, we've lowered it right down. I've set the heater for 10 degrees, so it, sh it shouldn't be coming on at all now. We're currently, I don't know if you can see that, we're on 13.1 degrees at the moment. Um, it's been pretty chilled off, to be, to be honest. Not, I, I was expecting it to be sulking, but yeah, it's a big. Over the week, I've been dropping it like a degree a day, so we were at just just 19.9 degrees, and you know now we're on 13. It's quite a significant drop, and you know you, they'll feel it. So I was expecting it to be sulking somewhat, but they've been absolutely fine. If anything, you know the, the, it, it's. It's chilled in my house. Um, did have a little bit of a KH drop in this the other day, and uh, uh, and and I noticed one thing you, you do notice about keeping koi is your behaviour of your koi, and obviously with viewing them every single day, you, you get to learn the behaviour of them. Now I come in on Tuesday, I think it was and he just wasn't themselves you know they weren't normally you come in like this and 
the swim over to you because they were waiting for food and stuff like that as soon as they take the lid off. You know, they, they wasn't doing that so I was like, hey, you know, something's wrong here. So I tested the water and K8 was at one drop. So normally mine sits around six drops, so quite a significant drop. So we're, we're currently buffering up at the moment with some bicarb. Got a, it's up back up to three drops now. We're, I'm, I'm gradually doing it. Don't want to do it too too quickly, as it could um, shock the fish. So we'll be putting a bit, a bit of bicarb in each day, um, and it's, it's, it'll bring it back up. It'll be fine. But these. The bats are the normal, I can tell by them. We'll just give them some food so you can see them. Still feeding well. I've just got to cut the feeding down a little bit. I'm only feeding. Like three smaller handfuls a day now, we were getting fed like five times a day, probably six times when I run. Oh, I'm off at the weekends. Well, I've dropped this down to four now, uh, three, sorry, just whilst I'm, I've lowered the temps and stuff like that, just, just, just in preparation for them going outside. Obviously, with the, the, the pond getting fired last now on Wednesday, yeah, there's a good chance, you know, we could be filling next weekend obviously the glass it has arrived that's there so that's all ready once it's fiberglass we can get that in big piece of glass 79 kilograms note to yourselves don't try and lift it on your own like i did and yet yeah, you'll end up with a bad back like now i have got but yeah glass is all there Glass dimensions are 13, 1880 millimeters by 800 millimeters and 25.5 mil thickness. Obviously, we will allow for a 40 mil, 40 mil rebate either side and a 40 mil, mil rebate on the bottom. So, viewing capacity is going to be 1300 mil by 760, which is a, a nice window, nice side window. So, all yeah, fixtures and fittings of order. They should be arriving Tuesday, Wednesday next week. Um, I've actually had a new weir plate for the sieve made. That's that there. The old one was falling to bits. It had previously been, I bought it second hand, um, and the, the guy who done the fit had tried to repair it with solvent weld glue and silicone and what have you. It was, it was falling to bits, so. I, um, I contacted the lads at JBR Plastics in Rainford up by me and he said could you bring your old one down and we could take templates off it and try and knock you one up and good enough they did you know and they've only charged me £30 for that so really happy with that it fits perfect so with this one now if, remember if you've not watched me previous pond build I had to, the sieve I've got is a self leveling sieve, that's a way, uh, um, I basically if the pump ever cuts out the, as the water level rises, that at the back here, that sits on that in the sieve, let's get it on for you, so basically that's like goes like that in the sieve and if the water level in the sieve rises, that raises the weir to above water level so it'll stop letting water in so there's no chance of it overflowing I had to take that off in the previous pond because the sieve was sitting higher than the pond so just where the filter house was situated so it wasn't allowing enough flow into the, into the sieve so I had to take it off and drop it and drop the weir plate down a bit but I'm going to put it back onto this one obviously I'm going to sight it right properly So that's all brand new, all done by JBR. Can't recommend the, the lads at JBR enough. If anyone's in the market for um, a, a backing shower, uh, aerated bottom drain, in wall skimmer, or anything 
plastic base like this. Get in touch with them because they're, they're fantastic lads. They're really good. Even like so if you wanted like a bio chamber making up the plastic welding from them spot on. It's really top notch. They actually supply a lot of the koi deals around the country with the showers. Uh, they're the ones who make them. And a lot of the um, the bottom vein skimmers too. So, you know, save yourself some money and go direct to J you know, JBR. They've got a website. All the contact details are on there. They will deal with you directly. That's not a problem. But obviously, if you're going through these, the Koi dealers, you're going to pay their price on them as well. If you're going direct to the manufacturer, you're going to save yourself some money. Yeah, well, that's that. Yeah, these are all happy as laddie. Got a bit of an issue with me Kindai shower. Just down there. Obviously with this tank, it's so big. It's hard to actually go and view the fish. You know, it's a good... It probably stands at the moment because it's on blocks, like a five foot. So it's hard to view your fish in it. And, and to be honest, with the pond build and what have you, I've not really been paying much attention to these in here. Um, but the, I noticed the other day that the Kimbai show was just sat on the bottom like that, and I'm like, and I'm seeing one of his fins quite raggedy on the edges. So I got him out and bowled him up on Wednesday, and he's got some sores underneath. Look like pressure wounds, like because he's been sitting on the bottom. Now I feel really terrible for this because I've not noticed. Um, so I do feel really bad about it. So obviously the water, I've scraped and everything. There's no um, parasites on the scrape. Slime coat is really, really quite loose actually. And there's no slime food underneath. But there's nothing on the scrape. So I think it's a bit of a bacterial problem with them. So we yeah, have given an injection of Batril and I've also treated the pond with FMG. Um, none of the others are showing signs, but you know, obviously there is an issue with this one, and it's one of my favourite fish. That obviously it looks a bit skinny now because obviously they're not really feeding properly. But I just want to get it, get them right as rain before they go outside. So obviously this is why it's got this little bluey green cast to this one. But anyway. <laughs> That's the fish, folks. I said I'll probably give them another jab on Saturday or Sunday at Baytro. But these are all doing brilliantly. Getting them ready now for going outside. Hopefully, this should be around about ambient temperature around around about Sunday, I reckon. So they'll have a good week and a half or so in there to get themselves ready for them going outside. But yeah, we'll crack on with the work outside. So, our returns are all drilled out 
and we've got the return PVC plates in place now just chamfer the way a bit of the insulation so they sit back nice and flush we get a better better finish to the fiberglass and then Kemble fiberglass right the way up to them and inside but yeah good progress I'm going to call it a day now starting to lose light so we started taping up over here but we'll get that done um, tomorrow and then Sunday I'm going to be on with the electrics for the pond so we'll video that and get it up for you to see but yeah good progress again we're getting there as they say hopefully this time next week we could be well filling up Um, I'd just like to say a big thank you to everyone who subscribed. I've had a good influx of subscribers the past few weeks. Obviously, a lot of people taking interest in new pond builds. Um, we're nearly at the third 1000 stage now, which is really mind blowing. Um, never thought when I started this out, this YouTube channel, that we get to a thousand subs. So, just really like to say a thank you to all old and new subscribers um, again don't forget our discord group guys if you want to join i'll put the link in the comments i'll pin it to the top of the comments everyone is welcome we're currently just trying to set up a growing show um where we're going to look at getting some nice chigoy tosai from cuttlebrook um, anyone is welcome to join in if they want to I think there's about 12 or 13 so far doing it but if you would like to join our discord group follow the link create an account if you don't if you don't have one and if you want to participate in the growing show just let us know in comments away there's various sections in discord so you're more than welcome to jump on board and get chatting to more koi hobbyists but anyway guys again thank you very much let me know what you think and what you're up to and i'll see you on the next one take it easy